I would like to take you again to Hamburg. I didn't know that my pre-speakers also showed so many examples from Hamburg. Um, yeah, my name is Kerstin Stelzer from Bockmann Consult, and we are also um, located in Hamburg, so I know very, very well the area I'm talking about now. So Chihuahua or City Water Watch was a project um, co-funded by the Ministry of um, Economy and Energy, and we were three partners. And um, one was the Hygiene Institute, so the institute in Hamburg the, um, responsible for the water quality, for measuring and monitoring and providing data. And um, BBA Moldenke, who is a um, company producing and constructing in situ measurements. And we from Bachmann Consult, we were the remote sensing, the satellite data guys looking into the water. So uh, we have a lot of water in Hamburg. Uh, there is uh, the Alster, a very large lake river in, in, the, mid, in the center of the city. And um, the, the Elbe River um, with, with a large harbor area. And there are a lot of bathing water lakes in, in the surrounding and, and in the city. So all this needs to be monitored and um, we all like water. It's good for the, the climate, it's good for our feeling and, and for recreation and also it is used for, for industry, of course. Um, and now um, what was also the intention of, of the um, authorities is to know more about the spatial distribution of um, the water quality um, because they always look at points and um, in situ measurements taken at a certain location, but they are interested in the spatial distribution of, of water quality and what is water quality, I will come in, in a second. Um, so the, what we see um, from the satellite, from the water, is first the color. And the color is, um, is coarsed or the responsibility for the color is either there's sediment or sand or something like this in the water or there's um, there are phytoplankton, so little algae in the water which produce chlorophyll. And um, there's also um, humic substances which are very dark. So all these substances, they, they are responsible for the color of the water and um, this is changed, so these substances in the water change the light and reflect it back to the satellite sensor and this is what we measure and this is where we get our information out, looking at the absorption and scattering processes which happen in the water at these little um, constituents in the water. And this tells us what is in there. And what we understand of water quality is uh, chlorophyll concentration, so a proxy indicator for algal blooms, suspended sediment concentration, turbidity, how clear is the water or how turbid is the water, the sucky depths, how deep you can look into it, and a very inf important indicator, cyanobacteria indicator. Because cyanobacteria, it's blue algae, also known as this, can be toxic and then um, bathing water need to be closed because um, yeah, it can, it can be um, influence the health and it even can kill dogs. So nobody wants to drink this water anymore and, and the um, authorities are responsible to close those waters. So when we deal with waters in cities, we have a lot of surrounding, we have a lot of um, okay, this is not working, a lot of boats on the water and we need to take um, care of all these subjects um, when, we, when we process our satellite data. What you see here is the chlorophyll concentration overlaid in, in parts of the harbor in Hamburg. And um, so it's, it's important that we flag everything that is not valid, not a valid water pixel to get really good results so that um, we only show what is, what is um, reliable. Um, coming to the monitoring, the monitoring is done by the authorities. 
they are responsible to, to detect um, or to, to monitor the water. And um, there are several permanent measurement stations. There are some stations where um, they go from time to time. Um, but I would like to look at one of the permanent stations um, where they, the water is just flowing through. They, they do their analysis and um, can show this in the time series. What you see here is one of the stations at the Elbe River. The blue line is the permanent measurement station chlorophyll concentration, and the red dots are the chlorophyll concentration derived from the satellite data. In this case, it's Sentinel-2. <coughs> and um, what you see here is we have more measurements from in situ, but this is not very often the case. Often they go there once a month or every two months, and then we have much more information from the satellite data. Those images are used, or those graphs are needed to convince users that we measure the same thing, that we are not measuring the same thing, but we get similar results. That's the important point. So that it is a technique that can be used and help them also to, to monitor their waters. And um, yeah, producing these water quality products from satellite data is one thing. And the other thing is to develop interfaces so that this information can go to the users um, and combined with their work they are doing with the in situ measurements so that this comes really into, into action, into interaction. And um, this is what I would like to scratch here. So we start with one satellite image. We process it. We need certain processing steps atmospheric correction, water retrieval, masking. Um, so this is all that, that we know very well. We produce this for, s for each available and suitable image. So clouds are disturbing our images. We, we are reliant on, on clear water, uh, clear sky conditions. And we put all this in the data cube um, to have a consistent temporal spatial data set. And, and this is then, then, then we need the interfaces to the users because usually they cannot work with, with those data, but then we also work on the interfaces. Either we provide them APIs, they can program and access the data, or we provide the data via data viewers or, or in fact sheets explaining how their water look like with different graphs and maps. This is very individual from user to user. We talk a lot with them. How would you like to get the information we can provide you so that you can very easily integrate it into your daily work? Because this is often a, a big problem that Earth observation data is not um, integrated in the authority sets, but this is getting more and more the case. Um, yeah, just a small sketch into the viewer we, are, we used and developed in order to show the data. These are just RGB images. It's a very nice clear sky RGB image. And then there's the chlorophyll concentration divide only for the water bodies that, that are shown. And now we can see how, how nicely we have the spatial distribution of the parameters. Um, which cannot be sketched by only few measurement stations. And as we have this data cube, we also have time series, what you see here, several years, um, and the chlorophyll concentration within one lake. And if we squeeze this to one year only, we see the seasonal trend of the chlorophyll concentration. They are growing in springtime, going down in summer a bit and then have a second bloom in autumn. This is a very normal way how they, how they grow. Um, so that the user has this viewer and can, can look at his or her lake and investigate in detail. Um, another example how we try to get the data closer to the user is that um, to format it the way they are used to it. For instance, here, this is an example of a harbor cruise. They do this every two months. And um, 
in each of these segments, you see there they have one water sample which they analyze, which is then representing all the, all the area. And if we come now with the satellite data, we have similar information all over the water bodies, and we can format it the same way they are used to it and provide it via OGC um, services to their system. So this is the Hamburg um, Geo-Online portal where they store all their harbor cruises data. And um, yeah, if we provide them the data from the satellite data the same way, they can simply integrate it and have a bit more and more often information on the chlorophyll concentration. And what we are doing now, so Chihuahua was a project, and at a certain point it entered into a service, which is always a very nice thing if you can continue after a project um, with users that are interested. What you see here is Eichbaumsee. It's a lake so southeast of Hamburg. And um, it's very famous in Hamburg because it's closed since years due to blau Algenblüten, which are cyanobacteria blooms. And this year they wanted to open it again. They said we, we want to open it, it and regularly monitor it. But unfortunately at the bathing spot here, already in June, they were again, uh, they had to close it because blue algae was growing. Um, they opened it again end of June, but in end of August they had to close it again. Um, so and then as we were serving them with, with our satellite data, um, this helped them also to assess where are the algae, is it only at the, at the bathing spot, is it, is it at the west end of the lake. And um, yeah, this is an indicator for cyanobacteria blooms, um, which indicate if it's wet, be careful, please go out, do a measurement and, and look at the water. So it's not that we say, um, yeah, it, it's more triggering the in-situ measurements so that they know, okay, we have to go to our lakes, we have to control and do our measurements. And um, this is the time series of the Suano indicator. And um, so we sent out um, automated alerts by email whenever this indicator is too high. They get, next day, they get the message um, be careful, we see a risk in your lake here and there. And um, yeah, this um, I would like to um, summarize. Um, so we have this complementary information in space and time from Earth observation about the water quality. Um, a good quality or a good validation is needed to convincing users that this is a technique they can use in addition. Um, uh, of course, the availability of suitable satellite data is key. And we have, to be honest, the problem that if we have clouds during the summer, we cannot see and detect the algae. Um, so it's always the user needs to be trained a bit um, that this can happen. And um, if they do not get an alert, this does not mean there is nothing, but it means it might be also a cloud so that we cannot see everything. And then the very important thing, there need to be interfaces very individually to the users so that they do not have work to work with it aid data, but they really can help them to work with it. And uh, mo combined monitoring concepts um, are tested more and more by the monitoring agencies, which is a very nice evolution development. So it's getting more and more used and, and accepted. Thank you.